Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today I want to do a, uh, a quick video on a, uh, a story, which I thought was uh, kind of cool. It's something that led to me getting a gun. It started with a Christmas pin. So uh, I'm going to tell you the, uh, the series of events here. I'm very excited about the gun. It is a, uh, a Remington Model 12. It's a gallery gun, so it's a little pump action uh, 22 and uh, it shoots 22 shorts, 22 longs, and 22 long rifle. And it is from 1913. Um, so it is 107 years old. I don't have it yet. It's still in uh, in transit. I'm very excited about it. It's a gun I actually wanted for a very long time. And uh, I'm, I'm getting one now because of this pin. So here is how that works out. So the story starts right here with this pin. This is a like a lapel pin. Uh, Christina loves Christmas pins. She has all kinds. And she puts them all over a jacket during uh, you know December and Christmas time and stuff. And I saw this last year, I want to say it was the uh, Vermont Country Store. They sell all kinds of like old-fashioned candy. They have some pajamas and clothing and like some random stuff, you know. They have a lot of like, uh, I don't know, stuff your, your grandparents might like. You know, different creams and stuff for sore feet and who knows what else is on there. But I always liked uh, looking at the catalog for the, uh, the, the treats. They have like, you know, traditional Christmas cakes and cookies and snacks and chocolates, like those little you know, liquor bottles where they put the, the booze inside the chocolate and stuff and just really cool. So I always like looking at it once in a blue moon, you know, I probably ordered from them maybe 10 times total. Um, and last year I ended up getting those things, those little liquor bottles. Um, but I got Christina one of these pins because I thought it was really cool. So this one is uh, Rudolph, of course. You see, pull down on the string and the nose lights up nice and red. So I thought it was kind of cool and she loves it. And she was rocking that last year, and I thought this year would be nice to surprise her with the Santa Claus one. All right. So, same deal. Pull on the string, and his nose lights up, all jolly and whatnot. Now, the pins led to the book. Um, in order to get free shipping, I had to get over a certain point. Uh, the pin was $20, and then I think it was like maybe free shipping over 50 bucks or something. And then I ended up buying a, um, a sheet set, which I'll show you just in a second here. Here's just the uh, corner of it. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, it's huge. So that's basically just a like plaid throw blanket. It's actually called like a cover sheet or something. I've never seen that before. I mean, we have sheet sets and they sell a sheet set that matches that, but a, a fitted sheet set is a fitted bottom sheet that has the elastic, so that goes over your mattress, right? And then you have a top sheet, all right, which lays on top of it, then you have your comforter or whatever. Um, this is supposed to go on top of the top sheet, which I don't really understand. But anyway, I just figured it'd be cool just to have as a, a thinner uh, type of like uh, throw blanket in case she gets a little chilly or something on the couch. So I have the pin, right, 20 bucks. Then I have that thing, which is like $30, but it was on sale. Now, the reason I got that, by the way, is because it's Portuguese cotton that's imported from Portugal. And my wife is half Portuguese and half uh, Puerto Rican. But all of our family is Portuguese. All right, so I thought that was kind of cool and just a little bonus. Um, it is awesome. Portuguese cotton is just uh, top-notch stuff. But the blanket was on sale, so I was still at like $48 or something. Um, and then I was looking around the website, I was trying to find something. I didn't want to get any more candy or anything. We're still calorie counting, and I didn't want you know, more desserts floating around. So uh, I eventually found this, all right? And this was also on sale for like six bucks. I don't know if they still have it on sale, but uh, if you, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of places that sell this. But this is basically just a, a remake of the original Boy Scout handbook, all right, from 1911. Thought this was really cool, you see, in full color, so I'm assuming it was originally in black and white. So they just, you know, colored the best they could, or what, what it should be. Um, I was a Boy Scout, I do have actually my original Boy Scout handbook, and uh, I have a couple old versions, not the original 1911, but I do have an old one from maybe the 30s, and I have a... A Girl Scout brownie book, you know, from like uh, the 20s, late 20s. So I thought it'd be really cool to get this, right, and read through it, and just, it's a good reference. I mean, some of the material is a little outdated. I did read through it, not the entire thing, but I, I read, you know, certain sections and, and chapters and skipped other parts that was less interesting to me. Um, but it's kind of cool just because of the time period, how they talk. You know, it, it's definitely a little bit different. Um, they do reference Indians, you know, like at some point, you know, looking at fire making stuff, uh, they're talking about how, you know, the, the Indians, you know, rub sticks together and it sounds impossible, but it's actually something that works and they talk about how to do that and stuff. So, you know, some of this, you know, survival type information was kind of new, but, and the Boy Scouts were brand new. But anyway, I thought this was a really cool book 
And uh, towards the back of the book, they have like some old ads for different things. All right, shredded wheat, um, you know, clothing, um, canteens, all kinds of stuff like that, right? So these old ads. Now, the very last page of this book is an ad for the Remington Model 12. All right, the Remington UMC rifles, okay? Now, the one on top is the Model 12. That's the original Model 12, the very first one. Um, and that one had the, the curved buttstock and it had an octagonal barrel, and it was also longer. And I want to say they made two versions of that. They made one that just shot 22 shorts, and then one that shot, you know, all three, the 22 shorts, the longs, and the long rifles. Not 100% on that. Uh, the research I did was mostly on the one that I'm getting. But there were two versions of the one that I was getting, um, which is a little bit later. I actually looked at the serial number, and the serial number, it dates it back to um, 1913. All right, which is awesome. Uh, now, the serial numbers back then worked literally how you would imagine. Number one was the first gun made. And I think there was 800,000 of these made uh, altogether. All right. Um, it was a good range, I want to say, till the 30s, maybe. You can look all this stuff up as well. But I thought this was really neat. So I saw this ad. Originally, these were $12.65. But, of course, it's all relevant. $12.65 sounds like it's nothing for a gun. But if you make $50 a week, that's a good chunk of change. Um... If you even made $50 a week. But anyway, yeah, I thought this was awesome. And it kind of got stuck in my head. So that's what happened. I uh, got this pin last year. <laughs> bought this pin this year because I wanted free shipping because I'm cheap. I got the book. Read through the book. Saw the ad. And now it's kind of stuck in my head. I'm like, you know, I always wanted a gallery gun. In fact, I would say in the last three years, every time we've been to a gun shop, I've always asked. And Christina knows this too. And she even you know, confirmed it when I said, like, you know, I want this guy. She's like, yeah, I know. You're always looking for it. And when I see them, they're generally, you know, depends on the condition, but generally speaking, they go for like five or 600 bucks. All right. If there's a really good one uh, or one of the octagonal barrel versions of it, they could be upwards of a thousand dollars. All right. Um, the cheapest I've ever seen one was like maybe 410 or something like that. So I really wanted this gun. Now, right now is not a, a fantastic time to be buying firearms. Everything is very extremely limited. Um, as well as prices being just all over the place, all right? It, it, there's serious price discrepancies based on demand uh, and availability. But I figured, you know, this is an antique gun, you know, so it shouldn't be that hard to find one, and it was. It was very hard to find one within my budget. Now, I didn't really have a set budget, but I knew that I didn't want to spend more than 500 bucks. That's what I put on it because I know that, you know, given enough time, I could find one in a shop somewhere for 500 bucks. So uh, I ended up going on GunBroker, and I've never used GunBroker before. That's kind of like the eBay of, uh, of guns. And uh, I did find one on there, and there's only like two or three days left at the time. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to register. I'm going to bid on this. And I'm going to win this. I want this gun. Now, I really wasn't expecting to pay more than 500 and I, that was my cap, my ultimate cap. I just, if it went over there, I just was going to stop bidding. But long story short, I won it. I won it for 450 bucks. Um... Given a different time period, maybe I can, could have got it for 200 or 300 but I'm very happy at that price for this gun. Um, so I'm just waiting for it to come. You know, this one is a little bit uh, crusty looking, uh, but not in a bad way. There's no, it's completely functional. There's no missing parts. A lot of times, like on the, the forearm, you know, where it pumps, the, the screws are missing and things like that. This one's complete. It just has a little bit of like surface rust and stuff, which I think will clean off very well. Um, when I do eventually get the gun, I'll post, you know, pictures and stuff on Instagram if you follow me on there. I'm also waiting for a, a Remington 870 uh, Express Magnum that I did a, a trade for. So, like the gun stuff, I, I would love to show you guys. It's, it's unfortunately YouTube. It, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just obviously frowned upon. Um, that's why I don't really do those videos anymore. I hope to do them again in the future. You never know. Maybe Google gets sold, YouTube gets sold or something, and, and some other person's running it. And I have no idea what the future holds. But, at, you know, every year that goes by, there's more and more changes, and it's more and more limiting. It's really, really unfortunate. You know, there's, there are plenty of gun stuff I've done, you know, since my last real gun videos. Um, and there are new guns they have and stuff, but I just, I, I just can't show it. Not easily and not without causing problems, so I just avoid it. But, like I said, I'll, I'll definitely share that on, uh, on Instagram. But I wanted to share this video, just the story of it. It's just kind of funny how things all, all tie together. 
you know, from one little Christmas lapel pin, I ended up with one of my bucket list guns. I have a long list of guns I want, like any gun person, just like if you're a knife person. There's a long list of knives you want. You know, and as you get one knife after another, you're like, oh, these are awesome, and then you just want more. That's just what happens. Oh, I, I, I laugh when people tell me, I have one grail knife. When I get that grail knife, I'm going to stop buying knives, because that's the only knife I ever wanted. Yeah, until you get the knife, and then you want something else, and that's totally fine. That's human nature. You know, you can have your dream car, and that's cool when you're driving your dream car around. It doesn't mean you stop wanting things. It's just what it is. <laughs> but um, a gallery gun was on my, my list of uh, guns I really, really wanted. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. And uh, it is over 100 years old, but it's functional, uh, fully mechanically functional, and I will be shooting it, we'll be firing it. I feel a little less concerned because of lower pressures of, uh, of 22s. But if you don't know, a gallery gun, I mean, when you go to the carnival, you know, now, well, not right now because there is no carnivals going on, but when society goes back to normal and you go back to the carnival, and you shoot the uh, the air gun, you try to shoot the star out, which is total BS, by the way. I'm not even going to get into that. Um, but back in the day, they'd give you a real gun, and you'd shoot 22 shorts. 22 short was just a little case. I mean, it was basically pushing a, a small bullet uh, with the power of the primer that's in there. And you'd shoot metal targets, and you'd knock them over. You know, you shoot enough targets or whatever it happened to be. You win a stuffed animal for your girlfriend or whatever. Um, but yeah, back when it was, it was way more fun, because you're actually shooting real guns. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, share my story with you guys. That's my little, well, not little. It's a large birthday gift to myself, as well as Christmas combined. Um, I explained this in one of the previous videos, but Christine and I are not uh, exchanging this year. So just being a little more practical, we're spending less money by just getting what we want. So I got one big thing. She got one big thing for herself, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comment section. If you're older, what are you buying yourself for Christmas this year? Or maybe your spouse or loved one. What are they getting you that you really, really want? Uh, and if you're younger, what are you asking Santa for? What do you want for Christmas? What's that one big gift? Is it a new Xbox? Is it an expensive knife? I'd love to hear about it. So let me know down in the comment section. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.